Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, last week uh, panned out very much as expected. Uh, very little happened, very little net change in prices, and a result also uh, very little net change in the spread scores. Uh, we started the week at 77, and we actually didn't move. All the daily scores are here in the box below the daily and as a result absolutely nothing is happening but it's nothing is happening in a positive way i.e the score is still very high 77 is a high score uh, it's maintaining the high score and basically prices seem to be adjusting in time rather than in uh, price therefore the consolidation should be ultimately bullish we have uh, our very, very important uh, closing price of 34.28. While we're above it, we're in the bull mode. While if we ever break it and close below, we will be in a risk off mode. But for the time being, absolutely nothing indicating risk off. Uh, the weeklies are, you know, uh, closing exactly where we did last week these moving averages are going out which basically indicates that we should be in a bull phase now the monthlies will close very soon um, another week or so and that will be that if this persists this should be the uh, first second third fourth fifth month in a row that we have uh, higher closing prices uh, on the risk dial which should indicate a continuation trend. Bonds are actually giving us very uh, good clarity. They are building definition. And uh, this is a chart of the bubble, and you can see how it's respecting the levels beautifully. All week, it's basically taken profits, and uh, on Friday, it failed to uh, keep that, you know, break this line. And I think the path of res least resistance is back down. In, in the bubble, it's very clear that only a close below 135.37 in futures is significant. And until we get that, we are shooting for this gap down uh, at, you know, prices which are above 136 in the futures. I prefer the bubble for longs in futures and actually the uh, bund for shorts. This is a short chart of the bund you can see how it's less well defined than the bubble but i still think it goes down uh, as i wrote last week i think any level around 175 12 to 38 in futures is decent long you know uh, risk reward and the stop is very clear a close below 174.97 uh, those levels have not changed i still think we go back down to this kind of line uh, with significant higher prices. Um, I would now and am uh, slightly long from the close on Friday of both Bund and Bobble, uh, more, bund, uh, more Bobble than Bund, uh, and I think that we go down to this area. So we are looking for prices which are, you know, significantly higher than uh, 176, around the 176.50 to 177 area. What a beautiful chart. I think the only reason why Bund and Bobble uh, last week couldn't make headway on the upside, but had a brief um, setback, um, you know, ever so slight, is because uh, of the US, which kept on pushing higher in yield and lower in price in the futures. <clears throat> but I think that uh, is coming to an end. I think uh, the US is going to stabilize at worst and do better in price at best. But we are getting close to a level that I do not expect to be broken in the spread, which is around the 150 area. So we are, what, 8 to 10 basis points away from that level. And I would expect a move back down towards 125 at some stage, having possibly tested the 150 level. I don't think this trend continues and breaks through 150. And therefore, I have to be slightly more bullish of US bonds. If we look at what happened last week in um, 
in, in the US Treasuries, it's quite obvious the FIRST 30 is kept on steepening and basically just uh, bounced off these levels. I think now if we start breaking above the 122 area, 122, 123, that is going to be, that's going to uh, signify a little bit of risk off going on. Uh, people buying longer maturities again. I do not expect 140 to be broken. 140 is my line in the sand and therefore 127, 128 are levels which before the election are quite attractive. Um, I think the longer end of the curve is beginning to be attractive on many levels um, and I really am not a seller of bonds at these yields. If we have a look at uh, the 30-year, the uh, or in any case, if we have a look at the, um, uh, the TLT, we will see that on the weekly chart, it's really, uh, it's got down to very, very important levels. We have the weekly Bollinger's coming in, and we have the, uh, you know, we have this moving averages support, I think it's more likely to trade in a range where it, where it closed Friday 157 odd all the way back up towards 150, uh, sorry 162. So 157 to 162 is the range that I would expect it to be in before the election. It's done quite a lot of work on the downside, you could call this an ABC down. And I think, you know, the risk reward actually is starting to look to the upside rather than the downside. And therefore, being bullish of everything and uh, having had a look at the, sp uh, the spread between the 10-year and, uh, and the Bund, it's more likely to me that Bund and Bob will go up next week uh, together with 10 years and 30 years. And if that's the case, we are probably going to get some mild risk off, but absolutely uh, nothing to write home about. The US dollar continues to frustrate everyone, longs and shorts. Um, what to say? I mean, the I, I think I've said it all. 92.56 is the very important level, and we need a weekly close below to say that we are uh, beginning to have another wave down. Now this trend line, and I, you know, I don't really believe in trend lines that much, is equivalent to this trend line here on the dailies. So this is on the weeklies and this is on the dailies. It seems to be hold, you know, uh, holding price extremely well. Now this pattern to me, the longer we stay in this area, uh, and without doing anything, neither are we getting to my good risk reward level around 96 to short and in this area between 95 something and 96, uh, nor are we breaking down. But this pattern to me is negative. Every week that we spend below this bunch of uh, moving averages is uh, another week that allows them to roll over and finally to break all the shorter averages below the longest. So to me, all the danger is still in the, on the downside. You will see how the Bollinger Bands are beginning to open up again on the weeklies. Uh, they're not quite ready to do so on the dailies, but that indicates to me that the danger is to the downside. Once we have our weekly close below 92.56, I think we can have the start of acceleration down. And what is the objective? Well, the objective is somewhere around here, uh, mid 88s. That's going to be very, very important support. Now, I, on, a, on a purely intellectual and macro standpoint, I believe that the world needs a lower dollar. Um, so, so many dollars are being printed, which is good, um, and we need a lower dollar to help all the other markets and generate demand and enable people to pay back their loans, which they took out in US dollars. Uh, so I really think that the danger of a higher dollar is much less than the danger of a lower dollar. And therefore, I will continue to try and short it rather than looking for levels to pick, pick it up. Very frustrating market, but I'm 
pretty sure that eventually it breaks these trend lines on the dailies and weeklies and does another leg down. Well, if I like bonds, I think they're stabilizing. And uh, if I think that the danger in the dollar is to the downside, I have to think that all the danger in gold is to the upside. Because gold prices, after all, are just, um, you know, um, a, a balance between where is real, where are real interest rates and where the dollar is going. Um, and therefore, I think I've said it all. I don't think, I mean, gold prices basically didn't move last week. I mean, what they moved close to close a dollar. Um, this 1860 area remains, whether you look at it on the weeklies or on the dailies, remains uh, very, very good support. Uh, we are basically stuck between the, 17, uh, the, the 1890s and the 1930s. I think for any strength to be shown, we have to start closing about 1937, 1938. But I still think that before the election, it's going to be very, very hard to break these highs uh, around the 1960 to 1975 area. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's more likely that we trade in a range between the 1850s, 1860s and the uh, 19. 1960s. I think it's going to be another quiet week for gold. But just like with the dollar, the longer this, uh, you know, prices are stuck in a box around here, uh, the sooner the 200 day moving average catches up and the sooner the long term moving averages here uh, catch up with the weekly price. And therefore, the pattern becomes more and more bullish with time. Um, I really see no reason to change my mind that this is a some sort of a complex ABC, uh, whether it stops at 1810 or we've already seen the lows is neither here nor there. The risk reward at 1810 is extremely good to the upside. To me, there were only two themes last week which were of importance. Uh, well, maybe three. The, the th the third we've already covered, and that is the curve has steepened to levels where I think the long bonds are now cheap. Um, you know, I, was, I tried to take advantage of that early, got buried, um, you know, came back out. But I think that on Friday um, it more or less stuck. And now we're going to get uh, higher bond prices this week in terms of futures. Um, so, i.e. lower yields. And I think the most important uh, takeaway last week was that we could never get a single close on the 195-minute chart below 34.28 in the futures. Um, not a single one. You know, we tried very hard on Monday and every time we tried, even on, uh, on, on Thursday, we could not get a close below it. Uh, that to me is a sign of strength and also a sign that this 34.28 level is becoming not only support but a pivot. Um, what is likely to happen? Okay, the, uh, the most likely uh, course of action is that we go and test 35.01 and possibly fail there and remain in this box between 34.28 and 35.01. I think it's the week before the election. I don't know what's you know going to make us bust through, but I'm going to respect uh, price. Uh, you know, anything could happen. Any headline could come out. Uh, one word of warning, okay? Because this is becoming such a um, such a pivot that I think that a break, uh, a closing break below 34, uh, 28 no longer is contained around 3393, uh, which gives, which is, don't forget the basis now, about eight ticks between SPX and ES. This, these charts are all uh, SPX. That we basically go all the way down to 3330. Okay, we go down to the low 
over Bollinger, whatever that happens to be, we just get smacked in a day. Some headline, who knows? But please respect that uh, uh, that level, 34.28. We close below it. Uh, you are going to have a move, a you know, a quick 3% uh, move in risk off all the way down to 33.30. And the final takeaway from last week for me was how technology just could not get out of its own way. The steepening yield curve has bas basically put a kibosh on technology. Uh, they don't like the run-up in duration, but if I think that the bonds are likely to do slightly better next week, I have to um, say that I think that that trend in uh, in NQ to the downside is possibly coming to an end and technology could um, really stage a little bit of a rebound next week. You will see that this week basically even the all the weak sectors like XLF and XLI rebounded quite strongly against technology and especially uh, IWM uh, where you can see that we closed at some pretty important, you know, very close to some really important levels here around 174. It's correcting more in uh, uh, in time rather than price, isn't it? So, you know, a small uptick next week in uh, in technology would not surprise me, especially because I'm slightly bullish of bonds, and I think the steepening trend is over for before the election, um, before the election results in any case. Uh, but here we have it. I think, uh, you know, if it starts breaking below 174, it could make a quick lunge down to 169. And, you know, that's a couple of percentage points and that's uh, quite, um, you know, quite significant. You will see a big move in, in NQ. So let's examine NQ and see what that says. But basically last week was one where it's been proven that the technology sector does not like a steepening yield curve, certainly not a bull steepening yield curve in yield, uh, and therefore is the worst performer while that is happening. NQ is basically tells you all that you need to know about technology. The fact that it could never really break below 11,566 and stay there tells me that it's now being supported and any kind of uh, flattening of the yield curve is going to force it up to 11,846. Uh, that is going to be the first level of resistance and if we break and uh, close above it on a 195 minute, we are probably going to go and test all the way up to 12,100, uh, you know, 80, 70, 80, 90, uh, just short of closing this gap. That is to me, uh, you know, the path of least resistance, <clears throat> but, you know, with a word of warning that if we start now to break down below 11,566, we are only going to find support at 11,276. We're not going to find any support before then. And I think on the weeklies, it's actually uh, beginning to be uh, even clearer. Uh, you know, we have to stay above 11,560 on a closing basis on a weekly, or we are going to go down to 11,000. And 58. Uh, but I am quite positive next week. I think we are more likely to squeeze upwards next week uh, because I am bullish on the bonds uh, rather than anything else. I wanted to have a special word about EEM uh, because it's looking more and more bullish. Um, I think that over the course of the next week or so we will test this uh, 47, 93, 48 area. Um, it's looking bullish against everything. Um, and I don't know if I uh, can show you. Uh, this is what I'm looking at. This is EEM over EWJ, so Japan, uh, EWG, uh, Germany. 
and this is against the SPY. Even against SPY, it's coming to levels which have been uh, great resistance. Uh, but I think they might be starting to break. And as you can see where we started 2020, uh, the only market that it's down against, i.e. Uh, underperformed against, is the US. It has outperformed now uh, Japan and it's outperformed Germany quite significantly. Uh, I think we are somewhere at some turning point. I don't know why. Um, I'm trying to figure it out. But I can see that the price is getting more and more bullish in the EM. Uh, and I just want you to warn it. But to warn you, maybe you need to up your allocation to that sector. Uh, it's still early. It still could be nothing. But I'm beginning to like it more and more. I also want to have a word about volatility, not because anything is happening, but precisely because nothing is happening. And therefore, it's an excellent time to uh, mark some levels down and to get ready to put on positions if they are triggered. I don't expect it to happen next week, but I just want you to have them uh, well written down. Uh, these are weekly charts, so we're talking about weekly closes. Anything below 22.51 in the SPX, I think uh, in, in, in the VIX vol, rather, sorry, which is on the SPX, is going to cause quite a big risk on move. Um, and similarly here, uh, and um, let's have a look what the precisely this level is, uh, anything below, uh, what, what is that, um, 30 something, let's have a, yes, 3020, anything below 3020 in the, uh, in the NASDAQ vol is going to have a very big effect and it should be a a technology outperforms signal. I think a lot of money uh, has uh, left technology over the past couple of weeks uh, of sideways consolidation uh, and that big money will need to be reinvested in that sector if we start seeing volatility closes below 3020. And so on to the summary sheet. Two stands, I think nothing's changed, 75 goes through there, something major is happening and I'm completely wrong that these bonds are going to stabilize next week. I'm not expecting it, but I am aware of it. Uh, five thirties, uh, you know, I think that now if we start going through 123, 122, that will be the sign that we have a flattening going on uh, and that bonds are all right and are investable and that chart I showed you earlier of the TLT uh, where I said, you know, we could go up towards the 160s. I think that will be happening. Uh, DXY, I'm not changing anything there. The, the level to me is quite clear. We keep on, you know, holding on by a fingernail. Uh, but I'm really not interested in getting involved in size uh, until we see this kind of area. Uh, you know, 96, between 95, 50 plus to 96. Uh, I'm just not interested. Gold, we find positive on the bond slightly and I'm, uh, you know, longer term bearish on there. I have to think that the real pickup areas, you know, I don't expect it to bust 1860 on the downside, but if it does, 1810 is going to be, I think, pretty damn good because the 200 day moving average and below that 1770 I shall add at those levels I don't think we're going to go up through 1960 70 1938 and closes above there are the first sign of strength I'm not really even expecting that I think it's going to be a very quiet sideways week SPX everything is really very very clear 3428 is huge it's not only just support it's now pivot um, you know what are we likely to test we're likely to test 3501 but no more than that I don't think um, it, it it's still in a box I don't see why things should change I think the, uh, the stupid stimulus thing why should the market care whether it happens in a week or two or three or four it's really not gonna care 
So um, I'm, I think it's unlikely that we bust 3501, even if we get a stimulus, but we get that kind of thing. Technology, uh, yes, we, we've got these levels that are very, you know, to me, very important. Uh, I would be very surprised if, we, if you start breaking them. To me, it's more likely that with bonds doing slightly better next week, we touch these levels in NQ, but that's going to be it. I think just like 3501 caps it, I think these level cap it in NQ as well. To me, <coughs> EEM is now an outperformer. Uh, if it gets down to 45, it's probably time to start adding some, but 4140, 4142 is a gift. I don't think we're going to see it, unfortunately. I'm going to keep it in there, but there you have it. I think very little resistance in in EEM until we get to 47.90, and I fully expect it to happen over the course of the next couple of weeks. I am not changing anything for the Bund and Bobble because they're very clear levels. These are the same as last week. Nothing has changed, and I see no reason to change it. I still think that the uh, Bobble goes to around the 136 area in the futures, or maybe slightly higher. And uh, I still think that we get to 72, 73 negative basis points in the Bund, and that is significantly above the 176 to 176.50 area. Thank you very much indeed, and tweet to you on Monday.